Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, All right. We're good. Hi, everybody. Dirk here, Loki's Reverie. We're following on the how to's of the home hunts. We just got done making the most integral part of our home hunt. This is an actuator switch for AC current that we can utilize for pressure switch. Whole idea of a pressure pressure switch is that people are walking along, they step on a certain place, and boom, the display goes off. There's lots of ways you can do it. You can use infrared beams, you can mo use motion detectors, but you can use pressure switches, which is what we're going to use. Now you can go to your Halloween store and for $29.95, you can buy an 8 inch by 10 inch pressure switch that doesn't do much of anything. Uh, we are building big ones. But this is the most important part. Reason being is all of our props this year rely on AC current to work. You know, lights, uh, power motors, things like that. And we're going to use a 12 volt system. Here's our 12 volt tester here uh, to test our switches. How this little puppy works? I'm going to bring it on in here. Okay. Good. Okay. Nice and tangled. How this little puppy works here is these wires will connect to a 12 volt battery, uh, jump pack, anything here and here. And when contact is made, this will actually go to our switch. I don't know if you can hear that. Actually here. When contact is made, can you see that? There you go. The 12 volt coil in these relays, these are actually uh, 12 volt coil relays. There's two of them, one for each wire. Uh, we found out the hard way that these are not double poles. Double poles, well, you, you just use one of them. We had to use two single poles. You know, 12 volt coils in here that when contact is made to a power supply, it activates a switch. It'll either take uh, a circuit that's normally closed and open it, or a circuit that's normally open and close it. So we've attached half of an in, a sacrificial extension cord here to the common terminals, and then on the normally open current we have this. So when the switch is activated, click click, there we go. So when the switch activates and by any type of trigger mechanism, in this case it will be our pressure switch, this will power our lights. Alright, and now we get on to how to build a pressure switch coming up. Okay, go ahead and turn that off then. Yeah. Does that just mean you're way high? <laughs> We're on. All right. All right, everybody. Today we're going to make a pressure switch. I was just talking about it and how you can buy a little, little bitty one about the size of a greeting card for $30. But for $30 in parts, you can build three of them that are huge, will last longer, and can do all sorts of things. Okay, first and foremost, in order to build one of these, you need a Loki's Reverie t-shirt. Loki'sReverie.com, spiritual wear for the masses. Get there, get your shirt, then you can get to work. Okay, we're going to build ours out of something a little bit more durable. That you can see a lot of tutorials on the internet. They tell you to use corrugated cardboard, and duct tape, and tin foil. And that works fine, but if you want something big that somebody's sure to step on, you have to use some wood. Uh, our, I wanted to do under $30 a piece to make a big one. Actually, I've got enough materials to build three of these uh, and that are going to be 36 by 32 inches and it costs $25 in parts and materials. Okay, now first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how this works. Basically, we have uh, certain things that we need. We need You need some pieces of wood. You can use cardboard if you want to. I don't recommend it. This is actually 8th inch underlay. These are $10 a sheet at uh, Home Depot. And I had mine cut uh, mostly there. So I'll cut it in thirds at 32 inches a piece. With the cast-offs, I cut some two-inch slats. In retrospect, it would have been a lot easier for me if I would have just gone to the paint department and said, hey, can I have some paint stirring sticks? And they would have done the same thing. All right, other materials you're going to need are right here. Uh, contact cement, 
about four dollars at your local hardware store. I had that lying around. Uh, aluminum foil, you can use any aluminum foil you want, but I like to use the heavy duty ones. You're going to need maybe some duct tape, you're going to need a utility knife to cut, some wire cutters, some paint brushes here to put your contact cement on, and some electrical wire for the switch. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to take two of these and we're going to coat them on one side with the aluminum foil. Then we're going to make, got it the wrong way, then we're going to make our pressure switch basically like this. Depending on the span, we might put one, maybe two more on the inside. There'll be a piece of tin foil here with one wire connected to it, a piece of tin foil here with one wire connected to that. This whole thing will sit down on top together like this. We'll duct tape and glue the whole thing together. Now if you look here, you'll see that these pieces aren't touching. But if somebody steps on it, it will mark the contact and set your switch. So the first thing we're going to do, and we don't have to record all this, is attach a tin foil to one side each. And we'll get back as soon as we have this thing there and we'll put it together. Okay, so here we are. We are looking at these with the tin foil on them. Uh, we didn't show us brushing the contact cement onto the boards and the tin foil so because that is eh, probably more boring than even just looking at these. All right, uh, we'll make an addition to tools you might need. Something to hold down your tin foil sheets for when the wind blows. Now also you'll notice here with the duct tape I've stripped off one end of wire here on each piece and taped it to it. Okay this will be the wires that may, that complete the circuit when the, the switch is triggered here that will go into our 12 volt power supply. Now I'll say why 12 volts on this? Well first off you don't want to put 110 current through uh, <laughs> through tin foil at all because it will do a nice little fire show for you. Another is you don't want people walking on live electricity like that. So we use a small DC current and the relay to trigger it. Okay, now in just a moment I'll put together the slats and should let you see how the whole thing goes together. Uh, normally one of my assistants would be uh, here helping me out and doing the camera work, but their mom made them uh, go in and eat dinner. Be right back. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. All right, it's now nighttime. We've had uh, three delays. I had to replace an outlet, reset the uh, <laughs> the relay, and I'm having some ground out along the edges, but some electrical tape took care of that. I'm going to look down here, I'll show you exactly how this switch works. Alright, we have got, this is basically our, our substitute for batteries, 12 volt power supply. Okay, one line of the power supply goes into the relay switch. The other line for the power supply, or the battery, goes into the switchboard here that I have my foot on. Uh, into one plate and then the other wire here is attached to the top plate and goes back into the the relay switch for 120 AC out uh, plug sacrificial uh, extension cord plugged into one half of the relays the other normally closed or normally open go in close back out into our second sacrificial extension cord into this lamp here now the whole point here is, if you can get my foot here, is that uh, this is a pressure switch. When somebody's standing on it, we have light. I take my foot off. No light. And pretty simple there. Once you have the thing together, it will take you a little bit of time to get the adjustments out. Uh, you'll see here that I have extra tin foil and things. I had some tin foil along the edges that was actually making contact all the time, regardless. Uh, so it's a little bit of insulating in there to do it good. The board will hold up a lot better than cardboard and having it uh, put in with contact adhesive or having the tin foil in with contact cement will uh, keep it from sagging. So something like this, the kids can walk back and forth on it all day. It's big enough that no matter where they start their step, they're actually going to end up stepping on it. Uh, and so this will run your lights, if you want your lights to come on at a certain point when somebody walks in, run your animatronics and things like that, which we'll get to building next. Thank you. All right.